Thank you, Sam, for that introduction and for inviting me here tonight. Well, I was going to talk to you about penile cancer, but um, Dr. Maholtra stole my thunder, and I was going to wear flip-flops, but Chip beat me to it as well. So I don't have a lot of tricks up my sleeve. But I did want to share a little bit about what I've learned um, as both a, a student, professional, and volunteer in the non-for-profit sector. So in my day job, I'm a philanthropy officer at BC Children's Hospital Foundation. I'm also a student um, in the Masters of Arts program in philanthropy and development at St. Mary's University of Minnesota. And in my volunteer life, I'm the chair of the leadership team for the Next Leaders Network. The Next Leaders Network is an association of professionals in the early to intermediate stages of their careers who want to create meaningful change um, with other people who work for a volunteer or with have interest in Metro Vancouver's not-for-profit community. The mission of the network is to inspire and build leadership for the sector. And three years ago, it was established with the vision of a community of not-for-profit leaders empowered with the skills, knowledge, and connections required to create positive change. Tonight, I'll share with you some of my thoughts and observations as it relates to the not-for-profit sector as I've come to understand it as an employee, volunteer, donor, and researcher. Now, most of us will agree that the health, wellness, and development of our not-for-profit organizations are inextricably tied to the quality of life and evolution and our evolution as a vibrant community. Our non-for-profits bring us together in spirit. This is Christ Church Cathedral in Burrard in West Georgia, but this could easily be any of the temples, mosques, and gurdwaras in our community. They bring us together in education. This is the University of British Columbia at the West Point Gray Campus, but could easily be Simon Fraser, Kwantlen, Capilino, or even our preschools. They bring us together in artistic expression, this little girl's from Arts Umbrella, but could be dance, music, as you've seen, and art. And it brings us together health and wellness. This young lady, my new friend, Lindsay Lorenko, is battling leukemia for the third time at BC Children's Hospital, but could easily be Alzheimer's, Canadian cancer, heart and stroke. Sports. You'll recognize Vancouver 2010 Organizing Committee for the Olympic and Paralympic Games, but could be recreational soccer, hockey, gymnastics. And advocacy, politics, and more. Even tonight's uh, Global Civic Policy Society bringing us together through the public salon. You get the point. The collective efforts of these groups and their supporters truly make us, Vancouver, a world-class city. Of course, these non-for-profit organizations are only as great as the people who lead and manage them both as paid staff and external talent, those volunteers and supporters in the community. When examining the sector now, it's fairly clear that it's facing serious workforce issues. Not only are many of our current leaders part of an aging demographic, but our ability to retain talented young professionals is woefully inadequate. Now the non the not-for-profit sector has historically been the second choice for professionals who left their for-profit or public service positions and made the switch, as it's known, applying their previous experience with on-the-job learning in their new roles. By way of example, this graph shows the field of current uh, fundraising professionals in the US and Canada and where they've come from before their fundraising careers. Now, it's only one specific role within the sector, but it is a good demonstration of the eclectic background of our professionals. I can use this example because it's unique to the nonprofit non sector, and it's the field in which I have the most expertise. You'll notice from this chart, or maybe not because it's so small, <laughs> that almost half of current fundraisers come from a business or PR background in North America. These individuals learned by doing when they started their new roles, honing their skills through years of application and doing their time and building traditions that are not meant to be broken. Contrast that with present day. We have the fortunate circumstances where bright young talent is making nonprofit non their first choice for a career. These young professionals are hungry for professional development, eager to advance, and focused on making an impact, which, at times, might challenge the traditional modus operandi, or those flavors of ice cream Chip was talking about. And why shouldn't they challenge us to do better? 
According to Statistics Canada, Canada's non nonprofit and voluntary sector is the world's second largest. The Netherlands is the largest, of course. And the United States is the fifth. Two million people are employed by these organizations in Canada, representing 11.1% of the economically active population. And the nonprofit sector represents $79.1 billion, or 7.8% of GDP, when it is, which is a larger share than automotive and manufacturing industries combined. Now we have the fortunate circumstance where Bright Talent is making not-for-profit their first choice for a career. These young professionals are hungry for professional development, eager to advance, and focused on making an impact. The not-for-profit sector, many of those who have established themselves in it are, through time are not prepared for this new influx. Specialized professional development programs are scarce. I had to go to Minnesota to, uh, for a graduate level program. There are three in North America. And they request increased responsibility and are often met with lectures on patients or doing the time. And challenge, challenges to status quo are often dismissed as unexperienced daydreams. But will our traditional approach lead us to achieve the most vibrant and engaged community possible? Probably not. Can we afford to miss out on this new wave of talent? The answer is no. The opportunity cost to us all is far too great. The Next Leaders Network is a response to this situation. It provides a space for, those, for these individuals that can gather, where formally or informally, virtually or in person, to share, learn, teach, and connect. However, this is only one answer. There are many other ways to enhance the capacity of our not-for-profit not sector here in Vancouver. Much, much more can be done. And with so much of, the health, of our health as a community depending on these organizations and on these people, we require as much talent, creativity, passion, and innovation as possible. Our need for new talent also includes you. What skills and experience or knowledge can you contribute? What innovative ideas and energy can you offer to improve the not-for-profit sector and the organizations behind it? What pr fresh perspective can you bring to a, to a sector that has so much to learn? And later on tonight, Sam and Lynn have arranged for uh, the lobby space to be open for us to gather together and have a cocktail. So I encourage you to join me and hopefully my fellow speakers there to continue the conversation about our sector and how it can be improved. Thank you.